What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to create our own distinct types in Python when it comes to type hinting using something called new type. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to create our own custom distinct types in Python today using something called new type. Now, as we all know, Python is a dynamically typed language, which means that I can do stuff like this. I can say a equals 10. I can say a equals hello world. I can say a equals true. And as you can see now, the same variable can have different types as the value changes. So I start with an integer, then I have a string, then I have a Boolean. I can do this with instances of classes. I can do this with uh, all sorts of things it can change the data type as the value changes. So it's not statically typed. However, what I can do in Python is I can provide a type hint, I can do stuff like a is an integer equal to 10. Now, of course, this doesn't enforce the type. So I can say print a and it works. But it also works if I change the value here to hello. So now it's a string, even though I say it's an integer, but I can still use it, the code doesn't break because of that. This is mainly relevant for um, consistency for type checkers for uh, the development environments that are going to pick up on that. So you can see PyCharm tells me here that the expected type is an integer, but I got a string instead. So it produces problems, but only in terms of consistency, not in terms of functionality. So I can still use this as a string, even though I say it's an integer. However, professional coding is usually done with type hinting. So we want to keep the types consistent. And sometimes we want to define our own types. Now let's say for example, I want to define a type called zip code. I want to have a specific data type zip code. Now what I can do is I can just use a simple alias. So I can say that zip code is just another way of saying int zip code is basically just an integer. So what I can do now is I can define a function. And I can say that this function takes, uh, I don't know, let's call this function print, print zip code or something, and I provide a code and this code has the data type zip code. Um, now this zip code, let's say I just want to print it. To keep the types consistent, of course, I have to pass a zip code to this function. So if I run this function, or if I call this function, and I pass the number 1234, you can see that I don't get any problems with the type checker, it tells me that that is fine, because I'm passing an integer and zip code is basically just an integer. The problem is that this is maybe not what I want. Maybe I really want to only accept zip codes, not integers. I want to have a distinct type zip code, which of course is in fact an integer, but I want to have the type hinting consistent. So only zip codes should actually be accepted by this function. If I want to do that, what I have to do is I have to import from typing from typing import, and then new type new type allows me to create a new distinct type, not just an alias, but something that is a unique type, which means that I can pass a zip code to the function, but I cannot pass an integer to the function, even though a zip code is basically just an integer. So what I do here is I say new type, and I provide the name zip code and the type int. So now the zip code is an integer still. However, you can see that the problem is here right now, it's expecting the type zip code, but it got an integer instead. This is the difference between using a type alias and using actually a new type, because now we have a distinct type. If I now want to pass 1234 to that function as a zip code, I first need to typecast it into a zip code, I need to say zip code, and this. Again, keep in mind, all of this is just for type checkers, none of this will break my code, I can still run this code without typecasting, because the type hints are just for consistency and just for type checkers. If you use something like MyPy, this is going to be relevant. But if you just run your code, it's not gonna break its functionality. But type hinting is done in professional development. So this is not uh, irrelevant at all. Um, so yeah, that's the basic idea. Now, if I want to say something like, let's say my function, let's change it to increment zip code, and return long function name, I know, then I can say it returns a zip code. And what I would have to do here is I would have to do something like return. If I say now code plus one, this is not going to work because that of course is not a zip code, it returns an integer. So what I have to do is I have to say zip code of code plus one. So that's the idea of having your own type. Now, keep in mind, none of this 
has any relevance when it comes to the runtime. So if I go ahead, for example, and I say print um, the type of 1234 and print the type of zip code 1234, both of them are going to be integers. A zip code is nothing but an integer. It's just in the code itself for the type checking tools that this is a zip code. In the actual runtime or during the actual runtime, this is an integer. It's an integer like every other integer, but while coding or in the code, it's a zip code, which means it's important for consistency, knowing which kind of values you're putting into which kind of functions and where you use zip codes and where you use ordinary integers. That's the basic idea. Um, and now just briefly, what's the difference between new type and a type variable? Uh, a type variable is a generic type. So I can say that T, for example, is a type variable um, T and I can define a function. Let's say again, print or maybe let's say add zip codes or something. Then the only thing I'm saying if I'm using the type T is that if I have code one of type T and code two of type T, that these two types are the same. I'm not saying that they have to even be integers. So I can say return code one plus code two. And this function, if I print add zip codes, I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This works because I have two integers. It also works with strings. So if I say this and this, this also works without problems. Uh, because a generic type means it doesn't matter what the type is, it just has to be the same type everywhere. So I cannot do something like uh, one, two, three, four, and a string here. Uh, and not just because it doesn't work. So of course, this is going to break the code because this operator is not defined, even if I change this to a float, for example, something like this, you can see it tells me that these two types are not the same. We're not matching the generic type T. However, if I run this, it still works. So it doesn't produce any problems here. That's the difference. A type variable will never actually be a unique type, a distinct type. An alias is just an alias. And this is actually a distinct type. This is how you create your own type that you can control in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.